Everybody and welcome to Bunny Peace Theater Tutorial Edition. Have you ever seen those fun alerts when someone gives a follow? Like this? It plays a little sound and puts a puts a thing on the screen? Or like this? Well today we're gonna show you how to build one of these using Streamer Bot. For this tutorial, you will need OBS Studio and StreamerBot installed on your computer. StreamerBot is a very powerful tool. When I first heard about it, I was confused because most bots used for streaming refer to chatbots. This one, you can do chatbot things with it, but it's so much more than that. It allows you to manipulate events on screen, it can integrate with VTube Studio, and channel points, and bits, and follows, and all kinds of events. It's a very powerful tool. So let me just hop out of the way and show you what I'm talking about here. Alright, so let's take a look at the different components we need inside our scene. So make a scene in OBS. I have a scene called Follow Events, which I embed into my main scene to keep things neat and organized. Our little alert here is going to be composed of a top text, which is a GDI text, this one here, a bottom text, which is the same, and then we have a bunch of images here, and I use different images for different events. For the GDI text, Set up the sources the way you want them to appear, with font and style and color, and position them where you'd like them to show up. Same with the image. Align it where you would like it to display. So we have our different components organized, ready to go in OBS. Let's head over to StreamerBot. So don't worry that I have a whole bunch of scenes and categories and things. You can ignore that for now. We've got our, our scene set up, and you know, it's a good thing to plan out first of all, what is it that you want to happen on screen, and when do you want it to happen? So we've outlined that what we want to happen when someone gives us a follow is we want to play this cute little gif, and we want to have a top text and a bottom text that updates with the username and a special message. So let's take a look at how we set that up. We've already got our components in our scene here. We've got our top text, our bottom text, and our images. The trigger is the event that causes these actions to go. So for the trigger, we have Twitch follow. So when someone follows us on our Twitch channel, that's what causes these events to happen. This main one is called an action. We've titled it event follow. And inside this box here are the sub-actions. These are the components. These are the things we want to happen. I'll show you the test again. So for this little alert, here's what we do. We have it play a sound. We have it update the top text. Update the bottom text. Then we have it make visible the top text, bottom text, and one of the images. Then we have a delay, we have it wait for a few seconds. And then after a few seconds, we have it hide the top text, hide the bottom text, and hide the image. All right, so let's walk through step by step and create our own follow event. Just so you can see how it's done. So we're just gonna right click anywhere on this half of the screen and click add to add an action. Let's name it something simple, sample, Follow. The group is just a way of organizing it. Each blue heading is a group. So we'll leave it in this group so we can find it again later. Now for queue, you have the option in StreamerBot to create different queues for events. So I'm going to put this under my Twitch events queue, but you don't have to worry about that. You can leave it under default. Then hit OK. Now we have our new action. So let's go into the sub actions and we will create what, the things that we want to happen and then afterwards we will assign a trigger. So what was, what's the first thing we want to happen? We want it to play a sound. When someone follows us we want to play a sound. So we'll right click and find the correct sub action in the little menu here. So this is going to be 
under core sounds play a sound you have two options here play a sound to play a specific sound or if you want it to play a random sound out of a selection you can put all the sounds you want in that selection into a folder and have it play a random one from that folder let's just choose a specific sound today play sound so let's choose a specific sound out of my sound alerts folder here i got some sailor moon sounds um i don't remember what they are let's just do sound number one <laughs> i'm sure that'll be fine now, important, there is a tick box here that says finish playing before continuing. If you leave this checked, it means it will play the sound in its entirety no matter how long it is, and it will not do any other sub actions until the sound is finished. So usually, you don't want that. Usually you want to uncheck that because you want other things to happen simultaneously. And then you can toggle the volume. So if you want John Cena to be really loud, you could tweak it up. Um, usually I, I have mine go down a little bit. But let's leave that at 100 for now, and let's test it. Let's see what it sounds like. That's a good sound. I like where that's at. Let's leave it where it is. So we've unchecked the box so it can play simultaneously. Let's hit OK. There we go. And if you ever want to test it, you can just go here, double click, test it. All right. We've got our sound. Possibly the trickier thing to set up is the text. So there's two things we want to do with the text. First, we want to change the message to a custom message, and then we want to display the text. So let's assign the message before it shows up. So to change the text, we go to OBS, Sources, Set GDI Text. That's how we update the text inside a GDI text source. Make sure you do have your OBS connected to StreamerBot. We're not going to go over that in this video, but make sure you've got that. So here we here we go. We select this scene. What scene are we in? We're in the HUD follows events scene. So let's find that HUD follows events. Let's change the top text. You can see it already draws all the GDI sources to choose from. So that's convenient. Let's do top text. So what do we have? What do we want to have in the text? Uh. Hello, user. Thank you for following. All right, let's let's test that. Let's see if that works. So I'm gonna click this visible through OBS, and let's see if it works. Hello, user, and hit OK. User is the variable name of the user who follows you. How do I know this? Because I checked the streamer bot documentation and all of the variables are in there. Hello. So if someone named Zod follows us, this will say, hello Zod, thank you for following. All right, I'm gonna hide that for now. Then let's duplicate this, duplicate sub action. And then we're gonna double click and then I'm gonna change it to bottom text here. And then we're going to say, welcome to Bunny Peace Theater. And then again, we can t test that. We'll unhide the source. And we'll hit test. And it changed the text. Excellent. So we know that that works. Let's hide that again. So far, we've got it to play a sound and we've got it to update the text. Now we want to show the text. So once again, we will go to OBS because we're updating our OBS. And we'll go to sources. Set source visibility state. And once again, you change this scene. So we select follow events and then select the source that you want to change the visibility of. In this case, we want to start by making the top text visible. So let's do that. Let's test it. It worked. Hooray. And then let's duplicate and do the same for the bottom text. So because we duplicated, all this information is already in here. We just got to select bottom text instead. And we'll do that. Okay. Okay. We have one more thing to make visible and that's the image. So let's duplicate again. And then we'll select draw heart. Okay. Let's check in our status. So 
we're going to play a sound. We're going to change the text for the top, the bottom, and then we are going to make visible. We're going to show the top, bottom, and the little draw heart image. And then what do we want to do? We want to wait. We want to wait. So we're going to add a delay. So let's go to core, delay. These are in milliseconds, not seconds. So you can Google to convert milliseconds into seconds if you want to know how long. I can do mine for about 4,000 milliseconds because that's, that's what I put for the other ones. And then after a few seconds, we want to hide all of these again because we don't want them to stay visible for the rest of our stream. They're going to cover everything up. So we're going to duplicate these three again. Duplicate one, duplicate two, duplicate three. And in this case, I'm duplicating them one by one so that I don't have to change the scene information. All we have to change is this visible to hidden. So we're going to double click and we're going to change state from visible to hidden. Visible to hidden. Visible to hidden. There's also an option here to toggle. So if you want something to toggle on and off instead of be selectively visible or hidden, say you want to redeem where people get to choose whether you put the cape on or put the cape off or put the hat on or put the hat off. Toggle would be a good use case for that. But in this case, we just want it hidden. So we'll hit OK. And that's it. That's our entire action. But how do we get this action to roll? We got to add a trigger. So let's right click in the trigger. And this is going to be for a Twitch follow. So we go to Twitch and we find it's under channel follow. Enabled. Yes, we want it enabled. OK, so we've got all our actions. We've got our follow trigger up, but we don't know when someone's going to follow us. We don't want to wait until then to find out if it works or not. So how do we test this? We can add a test trigger. So the real trigger is a Twitch follow, but our test trigger is going to be under core test. There's a space for us to put a variable. For example, for this one, we have our GDI text update based on the username. So we could input a username here to make sure that that variable inputs correctly. We don't have to do this. I'll show you without. So here it says, hello, percent user percent. But if we wanted to see what it would look like with a real username, we can change the variable. We don't need percent signs because it knows that it's a variable. And I'll we'll put Zorp. Now let's hit test again. Now it says, hello, Zorp. Thank you for following. So that's a good way to test if your variables will be input correctly. I'm going to draw your attention to our little scenes and sources over here. Watch what happens when we activate our test trigger. Look, you see they're visible. And now they're hidden. So essentially what StreamerBot does is it sends commands to your OBS and says, Hey, do this thing. But it does it hands off. So we can continue doing more important things. Like playing games and being a bunny. And that's all there is to it. There's a whole lot more things you can do with StreamerBot, but I hope that this gave you a good introduction to StreamerBot and demonstrated something concrete that you can build right away. If you like this tutorial, give us a thumbs up. Until next time, ta-ta for now, friends.